Welcome. I'm Distinguished Toastmaster Rhonda Walthall, and I'm the District 37 Club Growth Director. Welcome to Open House Training. Open houses are important events for you to have in order to increase membership in your club. Tonight, we have gathered a number of excellent speakers and leaders from around District 37 who are going to provide some insights for you to help you to have a successful and effective open house. Our first speaker tonight is going to be Gail Poom. Gail is currently serving as the Division C Director in District 37. She's going to be speaking to us tonight about planning and preparing for your open house event. Our second speaker will be Distinguished Toastmaster Deb Lee. Deb is a past select Distinguished District Governor from District 37, and she's going to be speaking about promoting your open house. Our next speaker will be Distinguished Toastmaster Michelle Bennett. Michelle is currently serving as the District 37 New Club Launch Chair, and Michelle will be walking you through best practices for conducting your open house. Our next speaker will be Distinguished Toastmaster Calvin Duncan. Calvin is currently the Club Coach Chair for District 37. Calvin will be talking to you about following up with your guest after the open house event. And then I will come back online and I will talk to you about all the District 37 incentives we have for clubs who have open house events. At this point, I'm going to stop sharing my presentation and switch over to Gail's presentation. Our first presenter will be Gail Poem. And Gail is going to be presenting how to plan for your legendary open house event. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Gail truly believes this, and she's going to share some wisdom with you on how you can prepare so that you don't fail and that you do have a successful open house event. All the tips and tricks you need today. So first, take a deep breath. And I will share some quick tips to get you started. Start early. That gives you a lot of time to work through your open house planning enlist your volunteers, and set it up for success. Second, make a list. Two reasons for that. First, it's gonna keep you organized throughout. When you don't start that early, you don't realize that a week or two before your open house, when you're setting up the agenda, you're planning roles, you're looking at all you need to do, and you're scanning through 20, 30 emails to find all that information. A list keeps you organized, whether it's an old school paper list, as you see in the picture, or your favorite online tool. Second reason, a list brings benefits to your brain. It also helps you maintain calmness. Your brain is a taskmaster, always worrying about what's up and coming next. When you write those things down that you need to do for the open house, your brain, your subconscious knows you have it under control, and it will back off a little. Third, just before you start, take a few moments to think about your why for this open house. Envision the event. It's going to be very successful. Can you see those guests there? Five to 10 will come into your club. Maybe some are converting. That's gonna help you in the long run. Now we're going to dive into the details of planning and a couple of the decisions you need to make. As I mentioned, start early, minimum five weeks before the event. Mention it at your club meeting. See what the response is. Does the club want to do this to build membership? Yes. Now start enlisting your volunteers. What roles are they interested in? You can have chairs, chair of advertising and PR, or of facilities or refreshments, or perhaps folks would prefer to contribute and be generalists. Work as a group and a team, but you don't have to do it all on your own. Choose the date. The earlier you choose the date, the earlier marketing materials can be created. It can be added to calendars and you can alert people to what's up and coming. Now let's take a look here and go to the right with decisions. As you're working through planning, you'll have to finalize some decisions on your open house. Where are you going to host it? 
In today's world, you have options such as virtual, hybrid, and in-person. Let's take out hybrid for a second. I call that one out. If your club has not been meeting in hybrid consistently, this may not be the option you wanna choose for this open house. Coming from my experience, I, I'm with a club that runs hybrid and it did take a few meetings to get comfortable in that space with all the setup that was required. You may be hosting virtual only right now or in person. You may be having hybrid meetings but would prefer to do this only virtual. So that's something you can decide for the open house. Your next decision is what is the attraction for this event? What is the value going to be to those guests you're trying to attract? Quite often, open house bring in a special guest speaker. You can reach out to other Toastmasters clubs or across the district to see if there's someone who's interested in speaking for your event and has a valuable topic for your audience. However, open houses do not need to be anchored by a guest speaker. There could be someone in your club who wants to put together a special speech for the open house, or you could host it around a special event. A club I'm with did one open house for a Tall Tales competition. That's quite fun to hear those stories. And we had a good amount of guests. Over on the left, back to the details. If you take my PDF that I'll share at the end, I ask you, have you started that list yet? It will help you out. Now you move through filling all your open house roles and starting on materials. You'll need a flyer for the event, agenda for the open house, additional marketing materials. If you are having that in-person option, you may want to consider refreshments, giving people a chance to mail and talk around gathering snacks. Again, these are details to consider in your planning and you are listing a team so you can delegate and not take it on all yourself. Other items that come up in planning, but I will refer to my fellow speakers throughout this presentation who will go into a much more details are to market, advertise, and communicate about the event, getting into crunch time and when you're actually hosting the event, and finally, following up with guests, help convert them to a member. Your open house can be legendary in this Talk Up Toastmaster season. All you have to do is start early and prepare, enlist and engage your team, the whole club even. I have a few resources on the right here. And as I mentioned, I will share this as a PDF as well, that if you're interested in going into anyone deeper, they're all links that will take you to more information. Now we'll move on to the next section and I will return the virtual lectern to our club growth director, Rhonda. Thank you, Gail. That was excellent. That was uh, legendary. So very, very nice. And thank you for sharing your presentation. I, I did uh, start the recording. So I just want everybody to know we're recording because there was a few people that couldn't make it this evening and they asked that we uh, do a recording. I did start a little bit late. So I'm sorry for interrupting you, Gail, when you were speaking on that. So great job. Okay, so now are you ready to learn how to promote your club so that you can get the most number of people guest, I should say, at your meeting. If so, please welcome our next presenter, Distinguished Toastmaster, Deb Lee. Fellow Toastmasters, you've started your list. You are ready to begin the promotional portion of the open house. Number one, do you have people within your club who are going to help you? Because this next part, you will never succeed by yourself. Now, why do I say that? Well, I want you to look. We're going to talk that you can do Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, 
LinkedIn. Now, unless you are full time retired and have nothing to do in your life, chances are very good that you can't do postings every day of the week to all five social media platforms. I know you can multitask, but it would be a lot more fun if you allowed the members of your club to participate too. So what I'm going to ask you to do is as you're talking to your volunteers, ask them, what are you comfortable with? You may find out that someone is thrilled to be on Instagram and every time they eat a meal, they take a picture of it and post it. Or you may find out that someone loves LinkedIn and posts multiple times a week. Well, then I want you to give those individuals free reign to go out and post for your open house. And when and what do you post? Well, for Facebook, it's very interesting the times that work the best. Saturdays and Sundays from noon until one. Wednesday from three until four and Thursdays and Fridays from 1 to 4 p.m. Now, there was research done by an individual whose name has totally slipped my mind. I am sorry, I cannot give him credit at the moment, but he said that after copious research, he had determined that people don't go out on Facebook on Monday and Tuesday. It's always on the weekends, or late in the week, late in the day. So why should you post when no one knows out there looking? And for Instagram, you need to be posting during the week. For Twitter, it's every day of the week, but traditionally the lunch hours work the best. Snapchat, I don't think anyone has a work schedule because they post every single day. And then, of course, LinkedIn. These are the people who are supposed to be at work. And so they're posting early, at lunch, and after work. Now, what I'm going to also recommend is that you are conscious of what you post. For most of our social media, you need to post photos and videos because we are very visual, with the exception of LinkedIn. People like to read on LinkedIn. So make certain that you post articles talking about the advantages of Toastmasters, the advantages of your club or whatever. And then let's talk about the actual content. Make sure, particularly for LinkedIn, that it has value to the audience. But Snapchat, it's all about the fun. And as you're doing things, make sure that it has thumb stopping power. What do I mean by that? Well, when you're on Facebook, if you don't see something that's interesting, you notice how I'm just buzzing right along with my mouse? You'll do the exact same thing, and so will your intended audience. Make sure that you are pushing information that they want to see. And make certain that multiple people post. Now, another thing 
that you need to work on is your actual physical liars. Now, Gail spoke about what kind of flyer do you want? You want a flyer that's going to give people information about your speaker. Who are they? Why is it important? And who can I get information from if I need it? The second thing you need to do is tell your audience where the Zoom link is. If you're doing a hybrid or if you're doing a Zoom only presentation. If you're doing an in person, make certain you include the full address. Now, what do I mean by full address? Say you're meeting at the Y and you tell people, we're in the conference room at the YMCA on such and such a street in Salisbury. Hmm, I'm a visitor. I've never been to the Y. I have no idea where the conference room is. Give me a clue. Or if it's for a corporate club, tell me exactly where the conference room is. Give me the floor and if possible, the conference room number and name. Now, why do I say that's important? Do you really want your visitors wandering around lost because they can't find your meeting? The next thing is make your presentation on your flyer exciting. Now, one thing I have a problem with on the first flyer is it's so busy. It's almost like those corporate four blockers that we get where they wanna give you the entire story on one page. This one's a little better, but this one got my attention. Deb, I think we're still seeing your social media slide. Oh no, it says I'm sharing. And I did not know I wasn't sharing the right thing. Let me close this. Ah, let's see if it will let me pick it up now. Sorry, folks, I will make sure you all get a copy of the flyers. Okay, so this flyer has lots of white space and open space and it catches your eye because of the color. While the previous slide has a lot of words and people are not going to read every word on your flyer. This one is a hybrid. It gives you a little bit of information in small chunks. And even more importantly, it gives you an Eventbrite location where you can sign up for the event. And if you're using social media, you need to give them links. Now, I like this because you have emojis, you have funny things, and you have a great picture. And you'll notice that the picture has been exaggerated to make certain that it catches your eye. Overall, what I've told you is make sure you advertise, advertise, advertise to keep your potential audience excited. Rhonda, I relinquish control to you. Uh, thank you, Deb. Those are a, that, that was a lot of really useful information that I wasn't aware of on social media. So I certainly learned a lot from that. So thank you for sharing. And your, your uh, flyers are beautiful, too. So if you wouldn't mind posting those to the chat, and uh, that would be wonderful. Great. So thank you so much for that. 
Now we're going to move over to Michelle Bennett. And Michelle is going to walk us through step-by-step -step on how to conduct a successful open house meeting. So please welcome Michelle. Yes, I am here. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Conducting the open house event. That didn't work. Okay. For some, you might have a demo meeting. For others, you may have an open house. The demo meeting, as you can see, is for a new potential club. This is where we want to conduct a regular Toastmasters meeting, and we want to show them what they might expect when they attend a Toastmasters meeting. The open house is for your existing clubs, and that's why we're here today, to hold an open house to invite others to join us at, in Toastmasters. The open house meeting First, you want to know your audience. You want to know, is it a corporate club? Is it a community club? These are questions you want to have answers to so that you can prepare the meeting according to the audience. We all know the meeting must fit the audience. Second, we want to market the meeting. As mentioned by Deb, you would want to use social media to market your meeting if that's appropriate. If it's a corporate club, you may not want to do that. You can use resources from Toastmasters International. And Toastmasters has a flyer out there or more than just one flyer. They have flyer options out there where you can plug in your meeting information, the Zoom link, the time and date, and you can also add contact information should someone need more information about the meeting. And as Deb mentioned, if it's an open club, perhaps you can use LinkedIn or Meetup. If it's a closed club, you might use internal communications to share that information with your fellow employees. And you want to be sure to include district members, district leadership, and your fellow club members if you belong to a club so that you will have support for your meeting. I'm trying to get back to you guys. Okay, I'm not sure what you're seeing on this. There we are. Okay, next you want to prepare the agenda and we'll go over just a sample agenda in just a minute. But fourthly, you want to make sure you have plenty of time for Q&A. This allows potential members to get their questions answered and to learn more about what was presented to them and what they might expect as members of Toastmasters. And as my fellow speaker, Calvin Duncan, will talk about in just a few minutes, follow-up is always very important. You wanna make sure you know who's going to follow up with whom about the Toastmasters meeting. And then we'll just talk a minute about the agenda. This is a recent agenda that I put together for Windstream Toastmasters Club, which is one of our newer clubs. On the left, you can see you can, if it's an existing club, a, this was an, this was a demo meeting, but the club was already in place. So perhaps it was their very first meeting. And on the left, we listed the officers of the club and we included their email addresses so that everyone would know how to get in touch with them. As you can see, we have a link to Toastmasters International. And I also included the club mission for Toastmasters. And then on the right side, you have your meeting date and time. We had the club sergeant of arms open the meeting and give just a brief introduction. Uh, of the president of the club. 
And of course, the president wanted to welcome all the other employees to the club. And the president also introduced the Toastmaster of the day. Uh, we put the times in there so folks know that we are all about time management. And this helps those who are speaking in the meeting to stay on time as well. The Toastmaster, as you can see, calls on the meeting leadership roles. And then we also had the grammarian to provide a word of the day. And I will say at that first meeting with Winstream, just about everybody who spoke did use the word of the day. It was very encouraging. Then we had just one speaker that day and the Toastmaster introduced the speaker around 3.17 p.m. Then we had the Toastmaster introduced the Table Topics Master and we conducted table topics for about 10 minutes. Then we had the general evaluator come to the virtual lectern and the general evaluation portion of the meeting was taking place right after that. In this club, they wanted to present awards. So they presented the best table topics and they also gave out that award. They did a virtual voting in the meeting and voted for the best table topic speaker. They only had one speaker, so they did not give out an award for that. Then the presiding officer led the Q&A session. We had members of Toastmasters, our District 37 in attendance and they were able to answer questions and participate in the Q&A. There were many questions and I will say for Windstream, the company was paying for the Toastmasters membership. So um, I, they have a lot of members and I said, if I worked there, I would have been first in line. So that's quite encouraging and they had management support I believe at some point in here, we did allow the uh, supporting officer to give a few words to the club, the potential club members at Windstream. And then the presiding officer adjourned the meeting. And if the club had a website, we included that at the bottom as well. So folks definitely know where to go for more information, they can go to the club website and they also have the officer information that will allow them to contact them directly for more information about Toastmasters. And just a few tips, you want to make sure you have an engaging speaker for the meeting. You wanna make sure you know the title and topic of the speech so that you know that it's appropriate for the audience. If your audience is uh, senior leaders who've been in, in the workforce for 20 and 30 years and they're leading this company, you wanna make sure you have the appropriate speaker for those senior leaders. You also wanna have a strong evaluator so that the potential members know what a strong evaluation is. And then for the table topics, you want to have a Toastmaster, a seasoned Toastmaster to start that off for you so that the others know what table topics is and how to respond to a table topic. So those again are just some tips on conducting the open house meeting. I hope you've picked up some great information and that those open houses will be scheduled very soon. I return the virtual lecture to Rhonda. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, so now we're going to move on to following up after the event and leading us through this session will be Calvin Duncan. So please welcome Calvin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Calvin Duncan, and I will share with you what you should do after the meeting. Give me a second here to get my screen set up. Some of you might see your pictures out there, and if so, just smile, because I, I hijacked this from, from Gail. 
for a follow-up. Let me move this picture out of the way so I can read. Diligent follow-up and follow-through will set you apart from the crowd and communicate excellence. This is a quote from John Maxwell. And it's very important, folks, that you do execute these steps for your follow-up because we spent all this time planning the meeting, all this time communicating the meeting, all this time convincing people to come and support us. So we have to make sure we get our bang for our buck, make sure we get at least two or three members. And the way we do that is just, just remember, let me move these pictures out of the way I can't see. To ask to, to, your main objective is to get your meeting participants to come back, get your guests to come back. And to explain what those steps are, I'm gonna use the acrostic back. The B, how did they benefit from the meeting? You want them to answer that question. You know, most people say that they benefit from the evaluation. You know, they talk about getting that feedback right after they speak on, on the things that they did right and the things that they did wrong or the things that they should could improve on. They also talk about the grammarian. And a lot of people, to be honest, they were kind of intimidated by the grammarian. Because the grammarian tells them about some things that they, are, they didn't realize that they did. But the grammarian gives that information to them. So there's a lot of areas in the meeting that they will benefit from, a guest will benefit from. It seems like just ordinary stuff to you as a Toastmaster, but to a novice ear, it's gold. So remember, ask them how did they benefit from the meeting? The A, acknowledge the difference their presence made. Now, I like to think about. Say, for example, when I go to a, a church, a new church and visit, I always feel special when the pastor makes me stand up or the usher gives me special attendance, special attention because she knows that I'm visiting. That's how we should make our visitors feel. Our visitors, our participants to our open house, make them feel special. Do something or say something that can really make you stand out because they already attended a, a open house at South Park Toastmasters. But you want to set yourself apart from South Park Toastmasters. You want to say something or do something to make them realize that you're really special, that you really want to make them a better communicator. C, be sure to attain contact information. Now, I know we're doing these meetings uh, virtually. And you won't have that human to human contact, which was very beneficial when we met in person. But since we just have virtual contact, we need to make sure we get their email, their text, or whatever way they communicate, and just make sure that we make contact with them. Tell them when the meeting occurs, ask them if they have any questions, because normally someone has a question because. Most people don't ask all the questions that are prominent on their mind just because of fear of feeling like they're, they're an outlier. But there is information that they want to understand. And you want to make sure that they have an opportunity to ask for that information. Now, I know that's true because I've been in that situation before. OK, kill them with kindness. Thank them for coming. I mean, thank them over and over again. And I'm gonna give you an example of how that works. There's this young man named Raphael. And there's a young man named Angel. Every time I visit their clubs, they make me feel special. They make, they realize, they see me. They make me realize that they see me. That makes me wanna come back. So Gail, if you're wondering, why is Calvin always at our meetings? It's because Raphael makes me feel special. Kill them with kindness. In summary, folks, remember the acrostic back. How do they benefit from the meeting? Acknowledge the difference their presence made. Be sure to attain contact information. And most of all, kill them with kindness.
thank them for coming. And I thank you tonight for listening. I relinquish the virtual space to Rhonda. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Duncan. That was very, very good. I appreciate it. I mean, Calvin, I called you Duncan, sorry. Wonderful, Calvin. And I was wondering why you always come and visit us at People Growing Together. Now I know. It isn't because Gail and I are there. It's because Raphael makes you feel special, but hopefully Gail and I make you feel special too. <laughs> so I, I just want to uh, add that before COVID, we were all meeting in person. And whenever there was an open house event, I always made sure that we had something to hand to the guests to take with them. It might be just a small package with a membership application in it, maybe some other information about the club, some general information about Toastmasters and everything they would need to have at their fingertips so that they could get back in touch with you. And then following up, as, as Calvin said, is even better if you follow up with them. Now that we're virtual, you need to just think about it a little bit differently because there's not that opportunity to really to hand somebody that information and they may not, uh, hopefully if they, they came to the meeting, they'd be willing to share their contact information with you because that's, uh, if, they, if they, they took the first step to come to the open house. So hopefully they're ready to at least share their contact information with you. So that, that was really good. Thank you, Calvin. Okay, so I'm gonna go through a few more slides myself and then we'll open it up for Q and A. Okay, make sure I'm on the right slide. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing open house incentive. So we here in District 37 have an incentive for any club that holds an open house. The caveat is though that the, the open house needs to be advertised at least 30 days in advance on our District 37 calendar, and you need to hold the open house event in person. Now you can hold virtual open houses, but if you want to get reimbursed for expenses, you would need to have the in-person open house because the intention is to reimburse you for expenses for like sodas and snacks and, and things like that, that you would have if you had an in-person meeting that you wouldn't have if you had a virtual meeting. So that is, incentive is out there. If you have an open house, all you have to do is uh, save your receipt, uh, take a, a copy of it, you know, photograph of it uh, and send it to me and submit it to me and I will approve it for up to $50 for reimbursement. So that is one incentive that we have in the district for your clubs to hold open houses. To add your open house to the District 37 calendar, you just go out to our district37toastmasters.org site, and then you click on the Contact Us link in the upper right corner of the screen, and then you scroll down to Submit an Event or Event Update. It's one line. And then you click on the Event Submission form. And then there's just some simple information to fill out, you know, your name, the name of the club, what day the event's gonna be, is it an open house or whatever the event happens to be, and then put that information in there. If you've made your flyer, hopefully you have by that time, if you have your flyer available, you can upload your flyer to be included with the, uh, the calendar. And then you can also have an event bright uh, event created for you so that you can share that link. So that's available to you. I, I personally haven't tried it, but it looks like it's pretty easy to do. One of the reasons why we're encouraging clubs to have open houses is we're getting ready to go into the two remaining Toastmasters membership campaigns, which run uh, February 1st through March 31st, and that's Talk Up Toastmasters. And then there's the Beat the Clock campaign that runs May 1st to June 30th. And what happens if, if you happen to add five new dual or reinstated members during these periods, and then you submit their applications and payment to world headquarters by March 31st or June 30th, depending on the membership program, then you will receive from Toastmasters International a lovely satin ribbon for your banner. They are very, very nice. And then you also receive 10% off your next club order. You have to uh, do it within six months, but that's it's still nice to get that discount. And then on top of that, we will give you a $50 gift certificate to the TI store, and that's coming from District 37. Again, that's if you achieve the five new members during Talk Up Toastmasters or Beat the Clock. And then depending on if you've achieved one 
two or three of these membership campaigns, you may also get a cake party or a pizza party. So that's out there as an additional incentive. And this is what I mean by the, uh, the, the one, two, or three. So we've had this medley already, which ran uh, August 1st through September 30th. And we had three clubs that actually did add five new dual reinstated members during that period. And that was Friendship Toastmasters, Queen City Toastmasters, and Gateway to Speaking Excellence. So they are in the running for the three. If they are actually able to do it again, uh, at the at uh, Beat the Clock and Talk Up Toastmasters, then they'll get a $75 gift certificate and a pizza party. So this is kind of breaks down how we're doing the incentives. So I really encourage you to, to shoot for, for the remaining Talk Up Toastmasters or Beat the Clock, or if you happen to be a member of one of these three that achieves medley, I really encourage you to really shoot to have uh, success in all three membership campaigns. So that actually ends the presentation point. I, this is my contact information. Uh, please feel free to email me or call me and I will try and answer your questions uh, as quickly as possible. I'm gonna stop sharing now Oops. and just open it up. We've got a little less, we've got about 13 minutes and happy to answer any questions anyone may have of any of the presenters or if anybody wants to share some information on when they've had a really successful open house, or maybe lessons learned what not to do <laughs> if you had an open house that maybe didn't go as you planned. So the, the floor is open to anyone who would like to. I, I see Dewana Barnes has raised her hands. Yay, Friendship Toastmasters is in the house. <laughs> Woohoo! So my thoughts are this. Friendship Toastmasters had an amazing open house. I think it was in 2018 or 2019. And we had an esteemed guest speaker. Um, Toastmaster McNeil, was, he was your friend, Mr. Gant, Harvey Gant, Henry Gant, you know what I'm talking about. So he was amazing. And we, we, we got a lot of new members from that. But I would say there was one thing we didn't do and we didn't invite the press to cover that. And if you're gonna have an open house and you have an esteemed guest speaker, definitely invite your local newspaper or your local news media to cover something like that. And, um, and, and get a guest speaker for your open house. How about that? Definitely ask an esteemed uh, guests to come and speak at your open house or your club anniversary. Your club has been around 20 years, 40 years, five years. Invite your city councilman or uh, to come and speak. If you're holding your club in your library, invite the president of your library to come and speak. So um, it's a nice draw to get people to draw people in. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Duana. And congratulations again to Friendship Toastmasters. That's, <laughs> that's wonderful. Anybody else have something they'd like to share? Uh, Tim. Uh, thanks. I, since we have everybody here, one of the people I was thinking about that would make an amazing guest speaker for our open house we have coming up in April would be Linda Marie Miller. I think she took second place a couple years ago. Does anyone know her or know a way that I can get a hold of her that... Uh, to talk her into being a guest speaker at our club. I know she's from North Carolina. Uh, she's actually, part of 117. So if you go into 117, District 117's website, you can friend her from there. Cool. Reach Excellent. out to her that way. Thank you so much. You can also go to the PDQ Program Quality Director, Monica Custis. And um, that is one way to connect with Linda as well. But she's on the G, um, District 117 side. That's a Wonderful. great idea. Though. Thank you so much. This sounds like a great idea. It never occurred to us to have a guest speaker or to me. Um, and so this seems like it'll be a great idea. Yeah. Oh, and she's she would be an excellent speaker. She certainly you know had the world stage. So wonderful. Did very well there. I see Elizabeth has her hand raised. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Lime, Limeberger. Hi. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned, well, not so much as you per se, but um, and you mentioned that 
the prep time is five weeks just to prepare for a open house. Now, since, well, since our open house would, I mean, would actually be virtual, is five weeks really required? So I mentioned that as a best recommendation that I saw online. I also recommended that as that gives you the most time to list volunteers, maybe have a delay, still have a chance to catch up on the flyer. For sure, if you had to, you could do it in a shorter time frame, but you'll just be moving step by step and everyone will need to stay, stay on top of all their past items. But especially if you're going to look to bringing in a potential guest speaker, that's where as well you want to hope to um, have the time for them to commit. They may need a, a larger lead time before they could commit to a meeting. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and then also for Debbie, Deb, I did not realize in regards to social media that will, um, for instance, for uh, Facebook, um, and that it's Wednesday through the weekend and not on the weekdays. And, and then all of these certain times that take place. I mean, that's amazing. That, that's really amazing. I will tell the group, I did not create that PowerPoint document. That was created by Glenda Teams Edwards. But once she shared it with me, I started researching it. And it is amazing the difference in the audiences from each of the social media sites. I mean, even though all of us may be on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn, we're there for different reasons. So you need to treat each of the audiences differently, but they all can bring value to your club. So we all learn something new. And what about a copy of that form and that you post it? Um, and so can we get a copy of that? Uh, it's in the chat. Oh, it is in the chat. Okay, let me yes. look. Yes, I put uh, the vertical flyers, the horizontal flyers, and the social media. It's called Social Media Boot, boot Camp. Deb, do you mind if I add something to that? Oh, please. So so Facebook as well as LinkedIn have both changed their algorithms as to who they display content to. And the more frequent of a sharer you are, the higher likelihood that they're going to disperse your content more frequently throughout the day. So it, it is common um, for both Facebook and, and LinkedIn to only touch base on a certain portion of your distribution list, um, especially like with LinkedIn. So it might go out to like 20% of your thousand members on LinkedIn. Uh, so that's why it's important to, to share often, share frequently, and as other items come up to um, like those things too and share them because it increases like your social index uh, on LinkedIn, which means that the more content you put out there, the more likelihood that you're gonna have a larger population of individuals view it. So as an example, um, a couple of months ago, we did an open house for a leadership and because I, I have a, a, like 1,300 followers on um, or connections on LinkedIn, but I'm not really big on LinkedIn. So what occurs is that if I don't post the open house flyer within like five or six weeks, it, the full concentration of everybody who should see it will not see it. Because if I post it like a week out or two weeks out, only about 40, 50, 60% of that 1300 base will actually see it. Does that make sense? I did not know that. Yeah, they changed it about, I don't know, maybe Gail knows like a year ago, year and a half ago. <laughs> so it's really important, not only for you to do it, but also have other members um, do it as well. Um, and then encourage and say in the notes, please share with your networks. And that's how you get that connection made. Um, across hundreds, thousands of individuals to really see that message. Thanks for letting me share that, Deb. I, I do wanna talk a few minutes about uh, if you're in a corporate club, how do you advertise your corporate club open house? Uh, 
depending on your company, you may have a company newsletter, weekly newsletter. I know a lot of them, electronic newsletter. My Alpha Bravo Collins Club, we did that one time and we had 55 guests attend our next meeting. We weren't expecting that. It was so, it was wonderful, but it was like, whoa, <laughs> didn't realize how successful that would be. I also, uh, uh, I also, when we were meeting in person, would put flyers in the elevator and things like that. But I want to share something we did out when I was in San Diego. I was in a corporate club and our membership had, had gone up and down like most clubs do. So we decided we wanted to have a special event. And I had an, uh, a longtime retired Toastmaster. Or, I'm sorry, he was an international director, but he was retired from the Navy and, I, and a very loud speaker, huge, huge voice. And we conducted our meeting, not in our regular conference room where we'd have our normal Toastmasters meeting. We went down and we set up in the cafeteria and we conducted our Toastmasters meeting in the middle of the cafeteria. Now, yes, we had the drone of the noise of people talking around us, but we got a lot of attention that day because people weren't expecting a Toastmasters meeting to be set up in the cafeteria. We didn't do the U or anything like that. We just did chairs in a row, but it was very effective. We had people come check us out that we were so bold that we would actually do that. So there are things you, you can do within your company. Uh, you don't have to rely on social media if it's an internal company, corporate club. So you might want to think about that. The Tim, I see you have your hand up. Is that, do you have another question? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, it wasn't on the list of the big five, but the platform that we just got on two weeks ago is the District 37 meetup page. Okay. And the very first meeting we had after being on the meetup page, we had guests from the meetup page. And we've had a Facebook page for eight years, never had anyone ever say they came from it. The meetup page is up one day and we got a person. It was the craziest thing. So I would, I would big strong, if you don't have your, your club listed on meetup, we definitely plan to advertise our, our open house on that. That is a fantastic source for us at, at our first glance anyway. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and I, I, I remember, I guess, two people growing together a couple of weeks ago said the same thing. He found us on, on the meetup site. So I'm like, yes, so that is that is working. Wonderful. Um, does any, anyone else, I'm kind of looking to see if there's any more hands up. Uh, don't feel shy if, you've, if you'd like to ask a question. You don't have to raise your hand, just go ahead and speak up. We have, if you haven't already, please go to the chat and download uh, the information that was uploaded there, the presentations, the flyers. Um, I see a lot of people sharing some real nice thoughts. Corporate club advertisement, elevator flyers, break, for, break room flyers, absolutely. Yep. So that, that um, yes, go ahead. This is Deb, may I make one comment about corporate clubs also? Yes, please. If your corporation does any kind of meet and greet sessions for onboarding, or you do any special events where you're out in an open area, ask if you can have a table. At Bank of America, they do allow us to do that whenever they have something, whether it's for pets or it's for volunteers, or the basic onboarding, they allow us to have a table and we advertise all the clubs in whichever city it is. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, especially if you have like an employee resource group fair day, we, we do that um, at my company and all yep. the different ERGs will have a table set up and we, we get our Toastmasters table and we set up there too, just, just like an ERG. And uh, we have a lot of people come up and talk to us and uh, uh, even set up outside here in Charlotte, set up outside our cafeteria and the uh, uh, president of the company happened to be there that day. So he stopped in and is like, oh, what's this Toastmasters thing? And I invited him to join the club. And he said no, but he thanked us for actually doing this and getting the club started. So that was really nice. But, uh, yeah, the tables are great. Uh, Dewana, did you have another comment? Yes, I do. I am um, very familiar with corporate clubs. Now, one thing most corporate clubs have are internal Yammer, internal blogs. Mm -hmm. Definitely use that just like you would use social media outside. Use your internal 
intranet, use your Yammer inside. And piggybacking on DTM Lee's comment, use your learning and development department to make sure that your Toastmasters Club is part of your learning and development curriculum at, in your corporation and, and it's part of the onboarding process. Maybe get yourself designated as an employee, official employee resource group. You may be privy to a budget, uh, a huge budget if you can somehow finagle that. And um, just, just work it, Do you, you know, just use your internal social media, just like we, just like a community club uses external social media. And that's, that's all I had to say. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so great, that's great. Okay. Uh, does anybody have, else have anything else they'd like to share or have any other questions? Hi, Rhonda, this is Kritika. Um, just okay. wanted to ask a quick question and sure. I apologize, I'm not able to get on video as I'm in India right now and the quality is not that great. <laughs> So my question was, I am representing Harness Nest Toastmasters Club and we are planning to host our open house uh, in March as well. We did have a Facebook page earlier. For some reason, I don't know how it has just disappeared off the internet. Maybe it, was, it had something to do with the credentials because we got that passed on from another set of leadership and took that over after them. I was wondering if the Facebook page is something that is provided by the district or is it something that we create on our own, like Meetup? Uh, so uh, District 37 does have a Facebook uh, group, um, just like Toastmasters International has a Facebook group. You can become a member of that. A lot of clubs themselves have their own Facebook site. So I'm not sure what your situation is, if your club has their own Facebook site or or um, I'm, I'm not we sure. We had one earlier, but now I don't see it anymore. So I'm, I'm guessing we would have to create our own page if we need one, mm -hmm. but we would also regularly be posting on the District 37 website as yeah, well. Yes, you can do that. So yeah, you, you, mm -hmm. if you're a, just a, join the District 37 Facebook group and you can put your, your information about your club and the flyer, you know, picture of your flyer up there as well. Sounds good. Thank you so Absolutely. much. A great presentation today. Thanks oh, thank for sharing. You. Thank you. Well, hopefully we've uh, shared some information with you that you can uh, put to use and have some successful open houses. Uh, we we want to hand out those uh, incentives to the clubs and we want to see all the clubs grow in membership and be strong clubs. We all know how hard it is when membership in your club gets low. And so we want to try and get those numbers up so that you're not all working so hard in your meetings and not doing dual roles. <laughs> Um, uh, anything else from anybody? Hey, I wanted to add something that we're doing here at TIAA, um, Toastmasters of the Carolinas and SOCHAR Toastmasters, is that we are doing a youth leadership program for the kids or the children, nieces and nephews of the employees at TIAA. And so we're using that as a way in order to kind of garner interest from our employees. If they see their kids or their nieces and nephews or grandchildren excelling in the program, then hopefully we'll also see buy-in from them as well and um, interest from them as well. So we're kind of doing a little bit, of, we're pivoting towards the youth leadership um, to, to leverage that to try to grow membership as well. Great, excellent, wonderful. Okay. With that, we are a little bit past eight o'clock. I really do appreciate all your time. I know you're very, very busy and you took time out of your day to have one more Toastmasters meeting. And I really appreciate that you joined. And, and thank you to our, our presenters today, to Gail, to Deb, to Michelle, to Calvin. Thank you very, very much. Excellent, excellent material. And I wish you all a wonderful rest of your day. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, I see one more raised hand. Stephen, did you have a question? Or are you clapping? Those are claps, those are claps. Okay, those are claps. So I wish you all the, a wonderful rest of your day and, and uh, this meeting's officially adjourned. I guess we adjourned. <laughs> so, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.
ladies, that was a great presentation. And gentlemen. No. Yeah, I didn't present, but <laughs> there was a gentleman who presented. There was a gentleman, there was a gentleman who presented. that presented. Yeah. Yes. So thank that you was for asking really questions. So, so. Oh no, that was that was very helpful. In fact, the president of our club was here, and she was um, finding the email address for Linda Marie Miller while I was talking. Apparently, <laughs> she she sent it, or she says it's on LinkedIn. We can get her. We yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that's honestly, exciting. that's a really great way to connect with her is on LinkedIn. Oh, excellent. Good. He's really yeah, good she, about responding. Well, her presentation was amazing and it would fit so in with our club. It would be it would be great to have her. And I worry with like a speech craft or something, if you do an open house, 